nightmares in my head I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy uh, And silently it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer no exposure, I just wanna be a loner uh, Some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders Like moving boulders just to get out of the home It sucks, I've had enough I don't wanna feel the stuck Under the... As I was cleansing these decks The law enforcement card fell right out And it was in the reverse position when it landed on the table From my perspective and so I believe this was already a very beginning message that um, it's possible that a corrupt law enforcement was involved in Chris Cornell. So in case you didn't already know, today I'll be channeling the energy of Chris Cornell. So Chris Cornell is a musician and artist. He died on May 18th. 2017, the authorities ruled his death a suicide rather quickly. His wife, Vicky, thought that the suicide ruling was premature because at the time of it being called a suicide, they were still waiting on the toxicology results and the autopsy results. Um, there are many theories surrounding what Chris Cornell could have been up to in his, you know, final days leading up to his death. So some theories are that maybe he knew something about, you know, the Pizzagate situation, so to speak. Um, and if so, it's possible that his death really wasn't a suicide. I did find it interesting that we had this card fall out in the reverse position before we even got started. But now I'm going to shuffle that back into the deck so that it can become a part of the deck once again. All right. There we go. Okay, so now it is time to call in the energy of Chris Cornell. So, Chris Cornell, I'm about to light this candle in honor of your energy. And while this candle remains lit, I will be a channel for you to come through and to tell the truth from your perspective your story from your perspective so thank you thank you thank you so much chris cornell for joining us here tonight and i am now a channel for your energy to come through I'm going to go ahead and start with the murder mystery deck. I'm going to shuffle three times, cut the deck, draw a card, and then repeat that process two more times. All right, Chris Cornell, what really happened to you? Killer will murder again. So if it wasn't a suicide, then it's quite possible the killer who was responsible will do it again. And I'm sure it wasn't the first time, to be honest. We're talking serial killer situation. 
the likes of which we would be so surprised. Witnesses may fear coming forward with valuable information. So anyone else who may know something about this, they're not going to speak because they don't want to be next. All right, let's get one more card from this deck. Surveillance cameras may provide important clues. So I'm not sure if there was any camera at the place this happened. I'm not sure. I don't know this story. All right. Did I just put that back? Yeah. There we go. All right, Chris. Now I'm going to pull three cards from the Rider Weight tarot deck. And what I want to know here is, Chris Cornell, what was your energy leading up to the event of your death? I want to see your energy leading up to the time of your death. We have the chariot reversed. The hierophant. And we have the two of wands. I feel like, if, you know, the energy here for Chris was that in a certain way, he didn't feel like he was really in control of the direction his life was going in at the time. It had a lot to do with like tradition, uh, spirituality, certain spiritual principles of some kind. I have a feeling that it could be like a spiritual hierarchy almost. But I feel like with the two of wands, that Chris was looking into the future towards a certain goal himself. Even though he wasn't always in charge of the direction in which he was moving, I do feel like he was inspired to move in a certain direction based on what he wanted. All right. Now I'm going to shuffle the Deviant Moon tarot deck and I'm just going to draw three cards. I just want to get a little clarity on the energy of Chris Cornell. So Chris, let's get a little clarity on your energy. We have Queen of Cups. We have the Four of Swords. And finally, we have the Two of Swords. So, yeah. I see with the Queen of Cups being the face of the Dark Moon and she's gazing into her cup. So I just feel like, I feel like Chris Cornell was really hiding his true emotions the way that he truly felt about certain things. Um, let's see what we have here. The Four of Swords is giving me some type of vibe like a sacrifice. Like, his, I feel like his thoughts were like, he was sacrificing himself in honor of what it is that he wanted to express. And then we have this Two of 
swords, which reminds me a lot of like almost a spiritual battle that was taking place here. It's like a battle between dark and light, good and evil, so to speak, the two opposites. Okay. So I feel like there was some kind of decision to make regarding like, um, well, with it being swords, I just feel like it was this decision that had to be made, feeling like a sacrifice in some way, basically trying to decide how to express himself in some way, to reveal the dark you know, the dark side that he had been witnessing and recognizing. All right. Okay, Chris Cornell, we want to know what really happened to you. Well, I dropped way too many here. That's a funny start. Let's go ahead and shuffle these. One more shuffle here. I'm actually going to start this part with the situations deck first. Okay, Chris Cornell, we want to know more information about what happened to you at the time of your death. What was, what was the circumstance? Why did you end up dead? That's what we need to know. That card was the Obsession card. Ooh. Then we have Interlude, Pause, Timing Factor. Trash. All right, I'm gonna start with those. Oops, what are these here? All right, so we got the Obsession card. Must have indulgence. And then we got the Pause Timing Factor. And then the Trash card. So I wonder if there was something being held up. And in the meantime... It's like they had to dispose of him. But this interlude card is interesting. I feel like something was an issue with time, obviously. Timing factor. And it says pause. So I'm thinking it's like... Something's being held up. Something is being held up. And that was the emotions card. It says waves. Okay. We got the emotions card with projected future days, weeks, months. So I do feel like whatever it was, was uh, paused or being held up, you know, was maybe moved days, weeks, or even months uh, into the future. Um, caused an emotional thing to take place within him.
All right. Okay, Chris Cornell. Tell us more about this. Tell me more about the circumstance. Oh gosh. We got the Body Devil Deep Fake card. So it's almost like seeing someone's true colors. Like what they're putting out isn't really what they're like. And the next two cards we got was Pizzagate hmm, and Power Supply. Again, I feel like he was, um, something about him was maybe trying to interrupt the power supply in the body double deep fake. Okay, tell us more about Claire. That, that was too many. Just put them right back in. I was asking, what about Pizzagate? We got the assassination card. So, it's it's kind of confirming the theories out there with, with this whole idea. Whoa. We got the wedding marriage card and trapped, but when I looked at the wedding slash marriage card, I don't see it as much as like him being married. I like really the way that we think of marriage, but what I see this is, is like a commitment to something. It's a, like a lifetime commitment to something that caused him to feel trapped. A lifetime commitment to something. Causing him to feel trapped. Oops. I dropped too many. Again. Okay. Tell us more about the wedding, marriage, and trapped. We got the timeline issues card. Interesting. Because that interlude was making me feel like there's definitely a timeline issue. So I guess that this lifetime commitment that he's a part of and feeling trapped in is what's caused this timeline issue, this pause to take place, which like set him back somehow, whatever this is, and it caused him to be emotional about it. Maybe even feeling like, ugh. It's almost like his work was being thrown out somehow. I don't know. Because of a timeline issue. <clears throat> okay. Parental figure and greed. So someone who's like a parental figure to him was kind of running on greed and corruption. This could be a parent or it could be a parental figure. Someone that Chris would have been looking up to in his life and someone who he saw as kind of a mentor, right? Like a father figure. But this person is greedy and corrupt. Okay. Then we got neighborhood and homicide. Where did Chris die? Was it in his own home neighborhood? But we get the homicide card. Okay. So I do feel like this was not a case of him doing this to himself with that homicide card showing up. 
Serial killer. Remember, you guys? The killer will murder again. Then, of course, we get the serial killer card. Witnesses or anyone else is, like, afraid to say anything. Okay. It's like this parental figure. Body double, deep fake. That's the body double, deep fake. We got the couple and the man-made disaster card. Interesting. Was he ever in a, in a wreck, like a, a crash? We got this royalty card, and the god came up reverse with that. <sighs> yeah, I'm feeling like that spiritual warfare vibe here. It's like... um earthly greed versus being connected to source, right? Cryptocurrency. I'm pretty sure this is the kind of currency you would use when you're, you know, in the trafficking trade. Then we got the justice card. I feel like there is going to be a balancing of this. Um, this like spiritual warfare taking place. Yeah. This was about communication once again. As we were saying earlier with all those swords, the four of swords and the two of swords, there was something, again, that needs to be communicated. A lot like what we got with Chester Bennington's reading. So I feel like... Ooh. Oh, yeah. False flag. Social media lies. All right. Yeah. Then we got the money and the egotism cards. It's again, this parental figure, very greedy, um, looking at outer appearances, false flag, you know, lies on social media. And what's being communicated is a false flag. We got the corruption card, the greed card. We got this card, you guys. Which I do not think is just a conspiracy theory. We also got the cryptocurrency card. But we did get justice. So, I do believe that in one way or another, justice will eventually prevail here. I mean, it is possible that this, um, the life being taken at all is opening people's eyes to what could really be taking place that seems a little too far out there, too far-fetched. But it's real. <clears throat> thirsty. Okay. 
<sighs> we also got the, uh, remember, we got those cards, the um, marriage card and trapped. So, yeah, it's something that Chris Cornell was committed to in his life. Made him trapped. Made him feel trapped. It kind of, like, held him back from what he really wanted to do a lot of the time. It was this person. And this happened... You know, remember, we also got this card proving, again, we didn't get any cards saying um, the S word where he does it to himself. None of those cards say that. This was definitely someone that he looked up to. And we got the body double deep fake because it was someone that he also trusted and, you know, thought was on his side or thought was someone. What he was, the image of him, this person, the parental figure, the image they gave to Chris Cornell was different than the true them that was behind the scenes. And I believe that what is the obsession is this. And also, not only this, uh, but it was also money. You know, so this is something that was an obsession, a must-have indulgence. The whole thing. And I think what happened is... I think you started to see that. Any other messages, Chris? Is there any other messages? That was too many. Hold on. Any other messages, Chris? I think he wants to remove any negativity, cleanse all the negativity um, around his his wife. I think he tries to protect her based on my the cards I received. If you read my community post, then you know what I'm talking about. The cards, the four cards that I pulled earlier about this. We also got Bounty Hunter, Hot Pursuit. I think he's protecting his family as much as he can, spiritually, from any of that negative energy, you know. Anything else we need to know? Okay, so the first one that fell out was Revenge. And then for the clarity, these cards fell out together. Faked Death. Secret. And... Operation Mockingbird, government-controlled media. So, with these coming after the revenge card and as clarifiers for the revenge card, <clears throat> I feel like his death was set up to look the way it was. Um just as a way to control the narrative and to put out the narrative that they want. And let's not forget that at the very beginning when I was cleansing the decks, the law enforcement card came out as a reverse card. So, 
there's definitely a control taking place when it comes to, yeah, then we get New World Order. So, there is some kind of control taking place when it comes to the information that we're receiving regarding his death. Because remember, we also got false flag communication with social media and lies. Definitely a lot of control on the information that's being put out. Well, it's all because of this, you know. Um, they don't want to lose their power supply. They being whoever. Whoever's involved, right? So, yeah. I definitely feel that uh, greed. A lot of greed and... A lot of secrets and a lot of lies have come together to create the event of Chris Cornell's death. So it was greed. It was power. Um, yeah. Hopefully we will see some kind of balancing out here um, at some point in time. Because the possible balance that we'll find, what I'm hearing is like, it's enough to make him feel at peace for leaving this place so soon. But it's like, if, if we can get some justice, some balancing out of what's taking place, if we can get a little justice about this, then that's what matters, you know? You guys, I think that's pretty much it. The whole story is right here. We have definitely not, you know, a self-inflicted thing, I don't believe. Okay? Because we did get three cards, the magic number three, telling us that, no, this was not self-inflicted. This was done to him. And it's all about money. It's about that power. And it's about the control over the information that is being put out as well. It's all about that, um, you know. It's all about making sure that the narrative that the public receives is, you know, a story that they want to tell. A story that they want to share with the world. So. Alright. I think that that's pretty much the whole story. And let's just hope that we can start to balance out the scales. We can start to reveal what's really taking place with these people. They're not royalty as far as we know it at all. They're actually the opposite of that. All right. So. All right. It's time to send Chris back to the energy from where he came. So. Chris Cornell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And for sharing your story. And helping to reveal the truth surrounding what really happened to you. And so now, Chris Cornell, I release you to go back to the energy from where you came. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I love you. Bye. I got nightmares in my head, I fear. The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy And silently, it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no clothes